Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. And today we're gonna to do something a little bit fun that we probably should have done a while ago. And specifically, we're gonna look at the AWS instances. Now these are the M6 instances. We're gonna look at the I and the G. So the Intel Xeon Scalable third generation, codenamed Ice Lake, along with the Graviton 2 instance, which is AWS's kind of custom-ish Neoverse N1 part. And the reason I say that we should have done this earlier is, you know, we talked about this stuff all during the Ice Lake launch, talked about acceleration, like the AI acceleration that they have and crypto and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we really kind of focused on that, but we didn't really kind of go and actually show it because at the time it was kind of like brand new. It was a little hard to do. and just didn't have time to go do it in the time that we had. But then the last two weeks I've been at OCP Summit and I've been at Supercomputing and, you know, I talked to like systems vendors, customers like the oil and gas guys and all that kind of stuff. And just kind of like, you know, having beers, talking to folks. And they're all saying like, hey, you know, we actually are starting to use that stuff and it's really good. And here's why. And, you know, this kind of, you know, the AI acceleration lets us not use NVIDIA T4 GPUs because we actually don't need all the T4 performance. And this is like kind of good enough. And I was like, wow, we really should have probably covered that story. So anyway, I just got back from SC and I was like, okay, well, what's next? It's definitely AWS reInvent coming up very soon. Now, Graviton 2 was launched before Ice Lake. And because of that all the comparisons again totally valid right we're against cascade lake and they didn't really go and look at acceleration because the same accelerators weren't really in the market at that point as they are today and so that's just kind of how it was and i wanted to do a little tiny update before we actually get to the next generation chips and so we're really using this because I just want to set up the fact that those accelerators can give you giant performance gains, especially if you're just looking at just the acceleration bit, but then even gains in terms of overall workflows, you can also get gains. I also want to kind of kind of set some expectations on what that actually looks like. But I also just want to set up like why this is going to be an important topic going forward. And it's something that isn't necessarily easy to show if you're using super simple kind of point benchmarks. And so I just kind of, you know, for us, it's going to be a big deal. And I just kind of want to get everybody on the same page that these things are really good, but they also require an other level of effort and optimization in the code base. And just as a quick note, like when we did our launch piece on the Ice Lake, I mean, we literally had like slides in there that would say like, oh, you know, you could do like over 4X better crypto and AI inferencing performance, but we never actually tested it. And really um, we should have. So before we get too far, I realized that that was a total gap. And I was like, we gotta do this fast because I want to show this thing. And so I called up the Intel folks and I was like, hey, Intel folks, um, I want to go show the acceleration. Uh, I'm going to need a little bit of help. Are you guys cool with helping? And they were like, totally, we're going to help you out. And so we are going to say that this is sponsored. And just so you know, like they definitely did help, um, especially get like getting some of these things set up uh, because I'd never set up like one DNN before and stuff like that. So being able to get things set up, I think was really important. And then they're also paying for the AWS instances. So um, they're helping there. At the same time though, I just want to make sure that everybody's 100% clear that that this is always like SDH stuff is always done editorially independently. They didn't get to review this before it goes live or anything like that. So while they are helping, you know, kind of get us or down the path of getting the data, at the end of the day, this is being done editorially independent. And I just want to make sure that everybody's aware of kind of what's going on. But of course, like, you know, I knew that Intel was going to like kind of want to share this because they've been trying to get this message out, but it's actually kind of hard to. So I thought like maybe they'd be game for it and they were. And literally we had this call on Friday and we're publishing this today just because this is being done on a very, very short time frame. And the only way we're going to get done on that short time frame is if Intel helped as well. So that's anyway, that's kind of what's going on. Just want to make sure everybody's kind of clear before we get too far in this. And I mentioned that we are going to be using AWS instances. Uh, you know, the first one we're going to be basically for both of them, we're going to be using the M6 4X large, and we're going to have the G for Graviton 2, I for Intel Xeon Ice Lake generation. So those are going to be the two instances that we're basically going to be using. You're going to see that both of these instances have 16 vCPUs and 64 gigabytes of memory. They're mostly the same. There are a little bit differences in terms of networking uh, bandwidth. You could get more bandwidth with the Intel version than the Graviton 2 version, but most people don't talk about that. And we're just going to mention it real quick and we're not going to dwell on it. We're going to be testing really single uh, instances instances instead of kind of testing network instances just so that way we don't get into that well you know the intel one has a little bit more bandwidth like isn't that the reason that it's faster we're just not going to get into it and that's why one other really quick thing i just want to address because not a lot of people talk about this but we definitely need to what the obvious one that everybody kind of talks about is the m6g uh 4x large is i think like 61.6 cents per hour and the intel version so that's the m6i 4x large that one I think is 76.8 cents per hour or something like that. And we're using on demand there. And so that drives some kind of Delta on an hourly basis on demand of maybe just a little under 20% or so. Now, of course, a pet peeve of mine is that people just say like, oh, it's like, you know, 20% 
less expensive. And it kind of is if you just look at the instance, but realistically, you're not really running like just an instance, right? You probably have some like EBS storage. You may have some egress bandwidth or whatever. And so by the time, you know, you have all of your services and stuff that are around that instance, uh, that, that, 20% is not necessarily always like, you know, just under 20%. It could be a lot less than that if you're spending a lot more on those extra services. Like kind of like when we use EC2 uh, instances, we definitely have a lot of extra stuff. So the cost of the VM or the instance is not always uh, the sole driver, I guess, of having an instance online. I think everybody that uses cloud services totally knows that. And the other thing that I hear a lot of people talk about is that Graviton 2 is cheaper because it's an ARM processor. And that just, um, you know, like that that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. To be clear, I mean, we did Thunder X1. I spoke at the Thunder X2 launch. Uh, you know, so we've been doing ARM processors since basically they became somewhat viable. And this, the other side to it is like the cloud guys, they spend, you know, just absolutely way less than any uh, small, medium business or something like that would go out and purchase something for it. The, the cloud guys are paying way less than that. And really, you know, when you look at what an instance is, they're not really pricing it based on hardware. What they're basically pricing it on is like, hey, if we get these these folks using our instance, well, they're going to buy all of our other services that are around it. And part of the value of that instance is just all of the other plethora of AWS services. And like, let's just call it what it is. Like, you can't go and just go buy a Graviton you know, server from like 20 different vendors and throw it in your own data center if you wanted to leave AWS. So really what it is, is it's kind of like a little bit of a lock-in tool for AWS. And that is really a way to lock you into the cloud, just like they give you free bandwidth in, but charge you a ton, like crazy amounts to get bandwidth out. But anyway, we're not really kind of using this as a comparison between the actual chips themselves of like the Intel Ice Lake chip versus the Graviton 2, we're really using the two instances, right? Which are the M6 4X large instances. That's really what we're comparing. We're not comparing the underlying chips, but I do wanna show the impact of the accelerator. And so we're gonna basically show two workloads. First one we're gonna show is WordPress and it's pretty similar to something that like, you know, we would use to host STH. So we kind of built that stack out. The other one that we're gonna do is we're gonna use TensorFlow and we're gonna just do AI inferencing. Cause this is actually one that I had heard a lot about uh, at the different shows this last two weeks. So I kind of wanted to cover that one as well. And specifically what we're gonna do is just kind of show some of the impacts of having that accelerator there. Um, if you do things like you just kind of go run and you don't use any of these accelerators, you just run GCC for everything, you know, the, the ARM guys actually do very, very well, uh, especially if it's just like an integer workload, you know, they tend to do pretty well because they have a lot of cores. But at the same time, if you have to go spend time porting your environment to ARM, well, you could also just go and turn on some of these accelerators. And so I was like, well, we probably should just go show that just so that way we have it in the, you know, tome of STH and we can just kind of show that stuff off. So first, let's get to the WordPress side. And the WordPress one, uh, I have to say, I, I definitely feel uh, definitely feel like it's something that I definitely know decently well. So this is not just WordPress, but this is using Nginx, Ubuntu as our base OS image. Uh, we're using MariaDB for our database. We're also using PHP 7.3. And if you, know, you do run WordPress and you do use Nginx, you know that we're using PHP FPM uh, actually on that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Siege to actually go and run the load generation inside the instance. And in case you're wondering like, hmm, uh, why, why are we using this? Kind of really two reasons. One, uh, this, this is a setup that's near and dear to my heart. But number two, um, this is kind of a framework and kind of something that uh, Facebook actually developed back in the day. I think it was called like their OSS performance. And they actually had not just WordPress, but they also had like a couple other uh, popular frameworks or CMSs as well. But I like WordPress, so that's what we're gonna use. And I'm just gonna quickly note here that like when Intel shows off their crypto acceleration, you know, they're showing off that number that we showed earlier, which is like four point whatever X, right? That's a big number. But I really think that having OpenSSL and only running on the server is probably a little bit less common than using OpenSSL as a component in a bigger web application. And a lot of people run WordPress. So I just kind of feel like that's kind of an interesting one. And it's only a component of it. So you're not gonna see like a 4X improvement because well, there's other stuff going on. So just kind of looking at what we have here, we're gonna use our, the Graviton 2 as our kind of baseline here. Then what we're gonna have is two different Intel or I results. The first I result is basically, we're gonna just kind of use our kind of standard AES, just kind of like standard acceleration. And that's really gonna be like our least common denominator for, you know, when you're doing HTTPS website, like that's the kind of least common denominator that you'd probably configure. And then we're gonna have another version where we're actually gonna go, and that last one, we call it the Ice Lake Accelerated. And that's really just the one that is actually using the uh, specific Ice Lake hooks to be able to go and do that crypto acceleration. And what you're gonna see is you get like a mid 20s-ish performance boost going to the M. 6i versus the M6G when you kind of set up this little bit more complex of a workload, but I think it's, you know, 
I don't know if having a WordPress instance is really that complex, but just if you're gonna go kind of run all the way through the stack, that's kind of what you get. And so if you turn on that crypto acceleration really on that isolate platform or specific to that AWS uh, isolate platform, you might get more like a 40 to 50-ish percent increase in terms of performance. So you definitely do get something that is appreciably more than if you just kind of use the generic case, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's definitely not like 4X, but it's also a lot more than the 20-ish percent base difference in the cost of the instances, right? So just kind of wanted to point that out that there are some kind of cool use cases as you get a little bit more complex. Now, something that you will see, and we, we do this too, so 100%, you know, we do it, uh, is that a lot of people will just call like the Nginx benchmark and they'll only benchmark Nginx. And when you do that, like a lot of times, like it'll be a very simple web page. It doesn't have all the extra calling and all that extra database and all that other stuff behind it. And when that basically happens, um, you know, it's a lot less complex. Uh, a lot of times those, those tests don't use HTTPS. And so you will see that a lot of benchmarks will have these kind of like cloud processors that'll be much faster. But if you do turn on all the crypto or, you know, you turn on HTTP, HTTPS and all that kind of stuff, you can get these kind of benefits. And and, you know, frankly, for, for us, you know, we run a WordPress site, definitely. So uh, this is definitely, definitely an interesting result. I didn't actually know that it was going to be like this. Now onto the TensorFlow one. Now, there's definitely a lot of wisdom that just says like, hey, if you really want like high-end AI inference, go put GPUs in there, right? Or other kinds of AI accelerators. There's tons of them on the market. It's a giant market for the AI inference space. So why don't you go do that? But what I basically heard at OCP Summit and also at SC is like, hey, you know, not all of an application is going to require AI acceleration. And like, just to kind of give you some idea of what that would be is like, imagine you have like that WordPress site or something like that, but then every once in a while, you may have to go do some kind of like AI inference call or something like that, right? Well, one way you could do it is you could have an inference server set up with GPUs, but then you have to go and, you know, go from that, you know, WordPress instance, go out, hit the GPU server and then back. The other thing you could do is just host it on a GPU server, but then your cost is a lot higher and you're not really using that GPU that much. And so if you just need a little bit of inference in an application, but not necessarily, you know, so much that you need a GPU or you'd highly utilize a GPU, well then, you know, that's kind of really where this new AI acceleration comes in from Intel. And that's basically their idea. They're not saying like, hey, this replaces our all of our inference accelerator lines. They're basically saying like, hey, we're gonna start making this part of our products and so you can use it. It's basically like a free capability. And if it's good enough, then cool. Okay, so for this case, this is obviously gonna be one that Intel does way better than the Graviton 2. And the reason for that is really just the fact that you basically have the AI accelerator, or sorry, the AI inference accelerator on the M6i, but you don't have it on the Graviton 2 M6G. And so basically this is a pretty simple ResNet 50. And I know people are like, oh, ResNet's old, but it's kind of like the old standard that everybody used and we're using TensorFlow. And if you don't know what TensorFlow is, um, I can't really help you there. So maybe that would be an opportunity to go do a little research, but I think most people know what TensorFlow is at this point. And basically what we're doing is we're using FP32 and in eight, and we're also using two different batch sizes. So we're using kind of like a lower batch size, which would be like, you know, one. Uh, and that's really like, you know, if you have those kind of like one-off requests that you really need to be latency sensitive. We also have batches of like, I think like 16. And the idea there is really, you know, if you just are looking for more performance, you know, you do a batch and that's kind of what the batch size 16 is. And by the way, if you do do GPU-based acceleration, they tend to like a lot bigger batch sizes. Uh, so it's, that's just something that, is kind of well known. And if, so if you use like accelerators, a lot of times they target kind of those lower batch sizes for lower or faster response times. Just one other quick one on this is just the fact that one thing that we found was actually that the Graviton 2 performed a little bit better when we did uh, one kind of like instance per core and the M6i, which is the Intel one, actually did better when we did physical core rather than the, you know, 16 cores, right? So instead of using the hyper-threading cores, we just use a physical course. And by doing that, we actually got better performance. So that is one optimization that we made that's a little different between the two because, um, well, we just kind of want to show the best case for both of them. And that's kind of what we used. And, you know, frankly, the difference, as you would expect on this is just going to be huge, right? Because we have one chip with an AI accelerator, one chip without an AI accelerator. And so you see that Intel basically is able to process more images per second. 
So it's doing faster inferencing, higher throughput, and at lower latency. That's exactly what we would expect. We're not going to actually show the int eight uh, number for the Graviton because it was uh, it was real bad. We're just going to say that the Intel one was much better with int eight, of course, versus FP32. But the Graviton one, um, you know, it just doesn't support. It's not it's not made to do that, right? So that's just what it is. We're showing an accelerator that one chip has and one chip does not have. That's the entire point of this. So I'm just you know, calling that out. And of course, just as a market context here, I do think that we're going to start seeing these AI accelerators in a lot more uh, different platforms going forward. So this is something that I think Intel is just kind of a little ahead of the market on. I think other vendors are going to start doing this at some point because AI is just that big of a workload. And it's becoming that big of a thing that people are going to start accelerating it. And Intel just has it earlier. So I just kind of wanted to show that because we didn't do it during the Ice Lake launch. So I think it's kind of worth it to go do now. All right, so let's kind of just sum this up and just kind of get to like some of the key points. Um, first off, the big reason that I really wanted to go do this is because well, the world is changing, right? For STH, um, this is a big deal. And I wanted to at least set the stage using a piece like this to show why acceleration is important and also just kind of say why it's going to become harder and harder to start testing servers in the next you know year, two years, as more and more vendors get their various accelerators. I mean, it used to be back in the day that there weren't that many architectures. And so basically, if you knew the IPC, you knew the clock speed and how many cores you had, you had some general idea of relative processor performance. But these days, that's not necessarily the case, right? Because now we have different accelerators and those accelerators will have different performance. And going forward, it's not just even just the raw performance of those accelerators. It's also a question of like, how often is an application going to use an accelerator? For example, on when we did that WordPress one, like you could go and say like Intel, like, hey, we can actually do like over 4X improvement in crypto performance. But when you get to the actual application, you know, you're talking, you know, 30 ish to maybe 50 ish percent performance increase because it's only a portion of the overall application execution, right? So like, you know, that, that's a very big thing that people are going to have to start thinking about. And we as STH also have to think about just as we test the next generation of processors, right? How do we go and target realistic workloads that will resonate with people and, you know, really kind of get to touch some of these accelerators. Now, WordPress for me is like a super important one. Uh, and that stack, the reason that there's not like not Apache in there and stuff like that is because, you know, Nginx is awesome. But at the same time, um, you know, doing this for a lot of people going forward is going to be a challenge. It's something that we're going to definitely have to address in the next year. And, you know, for us, it's even going to be another challenge, right? Because we, we test everybody's servers and everybody's chips and all that kind of stuff. I mean, think about like, you know, if AWS has a new accelerator and that accelerator is specific to an AWS CPU because, you know, they are using Graviton as a lock-in tool. Well, then how is that or how do we go and explain that as a difference between something that, you know, you could go and purchase, you know, from a cloud vendor, from multiple cloud vendors, you could go buy stuff and throw it in your own data center or co-location or wherever the heck you want. Like, you know, how do we kind of look at a proprietary or an accelerator that's part of a proprietary chip and ecosystem versus things that are more kind of widely available? Like that's like a whole nother discussion topic that we're going to have to address. So if you have comments, I'd love to kind of hear how we should do that because you kind of think about this and hopefully by the end of this piece you're kind of getting that gravity of like oh my gosh there's gonna be a lot here um i'd love to kind of hear your thoughts in the comments because this is a big challenge that the sth team we're talking internally about a lot every week but anyway if you know you're like me and you're talking to folks now that things are somewhat opening up i guess maybe uh and you're talking to folks and people are saying like hey you know we're actually you're using this acceleration and it actually works really well and you're like oh uh I, I didn't really hear about that. I haven't tested it. Like what's going on? Hopefully this gives you just some idea in terms of a couple of examples that are kind of try going for like close to real world examples or as close as we could to real world examples and just kind of showing you some of the performance differences that you get if you start hitting those acceleration blocks. This can be a big trend of course going forward. So I do want to highlight this a little bit more. This is kind of like the first step. Again, let me know what you think in the comments. And hey, if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe, turn on notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.